How's it going everyone? I hope you're having a kick-ass week. Today I'm here to talk to you about wood aging spirits, uh, how much of it to use, and a few little tips to help you get a more reliable result that you're going to be more happy with. Welcome to Stiller everyone, I'm Jesse and this is the channel all about chasing the craft of home distillation and making it a legitimate hobby. Today we're doing stuff about aging spirits but we do everything from you know random sort of theoretical things through the whole practical process and so on and so forth. So if you're into craft spirits if you just like tasting them make sure you hit the subscribe button down below ring the notification bell and you won't miss anything. Alright guys so I've been getting a bunch of questions lately around uh, wood. How to use it, uh, the process that I use, how I decide how much to use and how long I do it for. So I figured I'd do a wee video on that today. Now that's what I want to focus on. What I'm not specifically going to be talking about is the type of wood you should be using. So should you be using French oak or American white oak? Should be you be using char or not char, toasted, all those sort of things. So if you want more information on the type of wood to use, uh, I'll put a link up top and a link in the description down below to a couple of videos on that. If you want to know how to prepare the wood, so you know perhaps you're looking at toasting something or charring something, I will put links for that in the cards and the description as well. The short but definitely not simple answer is yes. Uh, that's how much wood you should use and that's how long you should do it for. And what I mean by that is both of those things are, are almost endlessly variable in terms of what you might want to do and why you might want to do it. So what I want to do is give you a few examples. These are the three sort of um, extremities, I guess, for what I've been doing for three different reasons. So let's talk about those, all right? So the first one that I want to talk about is um, what I've been calling a forced age. And essentially what that is is I use about 500 mils of spirits and I use about that much wood. So that is about eight centimeters by one centimeter by two centimeters. That's roughly the amount of wood that I'm using for 500 mils to force age. When I say force aging, uh, I'm using temperature cycling. So I was initially using the microwave, which I actually think is slightly more effective, but I've gone away from that to using just hot water just because it's, uh, it's easier. I guess there's an argument to be made that it's safer. I can walk away from it. I just get a giant hot, big pot of hot water, fill it up with really hot water, drop this into it, forget about it for a couple of hours, pop it in the freezer, rinse and repeat. Now the reason I do that is to extract a whole lot of uh, wood flavor and sugar really really quickly. So I'm using a relatively really big piece of wood uh, for a very small amount of liquid. So once again that's this size piece of wood for about 500 mils uh, and I'll leave that in there for it's normally about three to four days of active cycling and then about another four to five days of just letting it chill with the wood in there. And at about that point, it's when it starts to really, really sort of, I don't want to use the word saturate because that misleads. But for me, at that point, it started to extract about all it can from the wood before it starts turning the corner and going pretty horrible. And what I mean by that is that you'll notice for all of these things that it'll get to a point where um, suddenly you're starting to pull a whole lot more undesirable flavors. So... Um, you're starting to pull sort of bitterness and tannin out and I actually like a little bit of bitterness and tannin um, but but I guess the point was just too much obviously you know so mm. so this is really not aging the spirit at all it's just cranking a whole lot of wood flavor into it it's infusing it with oak <laughs> if you're using oak or whatever other wood you're using it's not aging it yeah the reason I do it is because I find it a lot easier to imagine what a spirit's going to be like in six months or a year if I do this to it first. Yeah, it gives me an analog for what I could expect in the future. So maybe I will take uh, two of these, do one with, you know, it's a 220 degree toasted for four hours piece of wood, you know, something that looks kind of like this. And the other is raw oak that's been charred. I'll do them next to each other and kind of see which way I think is more the direction I think will work for that specific spirit, yeah? So this one, no, this is actually the rye, um, which was in the video for the rye. <coughs> and the wood for that one, oh, they went down the wrong hole. <coughs> 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 the, 
uh, is very much like a raw, <coughs> the wood for that one is very much like a raw, sawdusty uh, oak flavor. And then also paired with kind of like a vanilla caramel kind of thing going on. Which I think, personally, I think works really well with the rye sort of spicy flavors in this. And it's starting to get just a little bit of tannin in it as well. Um, which once again works, it all plays together. So you've got the, the, uh, the oak and the vanilla and the sugar sort of contrasting the rye flavors. And then you've got the, the, the tannin and the wood spice coming in and punching up the rye flavors as well. And because that works pretty close to what I want, I decided to use exactly the same oak for a medium length aging, which is this one here. All right, so this is two liters of spirit. The total volume I'm using for two liters is about this big. So that's about 10 centimeters by two centimeters by two and a half centimeters, uh, substantially more than this. But remember, this is 500 mils and this is actually a little over two liters, yeah? So in terms of the actual volume of wood that's in there, it's probably closer to half of that. And the reason I'm doing that is I'm not going to use it with temperature fluctuation. And the reason I'm doing that is I want to age this for about five months, about six months, and have it ready somewhere around Christmas in the summertime for us here in New Zealand. So December through February, somewhere around there is what I'm aiming for for that. Uh, so I know that it's going to take a significantly longer time. There's a whole lot less wood, and I'm also not temperature cycling it, yeah? So it's not going to pull those flavors out as fast. It's not going to break the wood down as quickly and essentially pull it into solution. So for me, for that sort of time period, sort of three to six months-ish, uh, I'm using that size piece of wood. And the reason I'm aiming for that time period is in my experience, this is all just my experience, if you pull a whole lot of flavor out of the wood and let it sit for three, four months, not a whole lot changes. That's, that's pretty much it. However, <laughs> however, when you get to right around six months, something starts to change. You get a new level of complexity and you start to stack the age factor into it. Now it's very, very, very young for actual aging, but I'm just saying that's when it starts to show up for me. It adds another layer of complexity, another layer of, there's just more coming out of it. The really, so this is like a pretty, maybe like a two or three dimensional flavor from the oak coming out, this starts to turning into maybe four or five layers of sort of flavor and nuance from the, the wood that's going into the spirit, compared to the white spirit would be, yeah? All right, so if we move from that over to this, uh, this is the Bastard Whiskey. The first aged spirit I ever made. It is uh, coming up two years in October. So it's starting to get a little bit of age on it, yeah? So, just a refresher guys, 500 mils with a piece of wood this big, uh, two liters with a piece of wood this big, and this is moving on to now, it was originally three liters, which is right around here. So it's maybe, maybe two and a half liters now. And that's how much wood has been in it for a long time. That's all. <laughs> so why use a whole lot less wood over a longer period of time? And the reason is that I'm trying to go for this, but more, <laughs> essentially. So I'm trying to get the same amount of wood influence as this, the same amount of wood influence I want in this, the same amount of color, the same amount of um, sweetness, the same amount of oakiness, the same amount of all of the flavors coming out of this, tannins, everything. I want the same amount in here, but what I want to happen is for that to happen over a really long time, to let all the chemicals that are coming out of the wood interact with the spirit, do their magic. I'm not even gonna to pretend to understand what's going on, but I am convinced that those things that come out of the wood and go into the spirit, they'll morph over time. They react with, I don't know what it is, they react with the oxygen, they react with the spirit themselves, uh, the spirit breaks them down into smaller parts. I, I, I have a hunch that's probably what it is from some reading I've done. That's all this is about. When I uh, get a whole lot more research done, I'll make a video on that as well. Uh, so the idea is here that I'm, I'm trying to introduce that time factor, right? Now, for those of you that have been around forever, or for those of you that go back and watch the, the Bastard Whiskey episodes, the Bastard Whiskey videos, you'll know that when that first went into this bottle, I had significantly more oak in there than I do now. So that's something I want to talk about now as well. Just because you put something into a spirit doesn't mean you're locked in. Cool? I put oak in this, I put significantly more than that in there, and it was in there for about two months. Uh, I got some feedback from people that I really appreciated 
you know, their knowledge. Uh, and I also started tasting it, and I could taste that it was headed in a direction uh, that wasn't what I wanted. So I whipped, you know, 90% of the wood out there and was left with this. So I had probably actually that much, you know, that much in there to start with from memory. The interesting thing is that it stalled right out in terms of the extraction from the wood, and it's actually turned into a bit of a technique that I am playing with and using a lot, a lot at the moment. And the general idea is basically to cram the spirit full of a whole lot of wood flavor, get it to the point where it's actually starting to get borderline too tannic, too spicy for you, the, um, the jarry, jaggy, harsh flavors that come out of the wood, and then whip a whole lot of the wood out, leave a tiny bit in there, and just let it chill for a while. And I've been noticing that if you do that, those bitter, tannic, jaggy, spicy, peppery notes will fade in time. And that's exactly what happened with this stuff here. Yep. I think that's got a ways to go yet. I would like to get that. I said when I made it that I was going to get it to two years. <laughs> now I'm thinking I want to keep it going even longer. Alright guys, so I hope that makes sense. And I hope that kind of illustrates what I'm doing with my... Uh, oak or other woods and the volumes that I'm using. The last thing I want to talk about is the ABV of the spirit that the wood is sitting in for us or that the, the you know, the, that is sitting in the barrel if you're using barrels. So this is something that I learnt from uh, the distillers in Austin when I was there and I'd heard reference to it um, but I hadn't heard it explained quite the way they put it to me. So let me see if I can relay that onto you. So the simplest version of this idea and it is simple guys because it's a whole lot more complex than what I'm about to describe you but this is the the reduced version of it if that makes sense the kind of um, this fits most of the time so at right around 55 56 percent ABV is kind of the tipping point of uh, the entry level spirit ABV Above 55, 56 degrees, so anywhere from 57, sort of up to about a little over 60%, that side of things is the spicy, the tannic, uh, the jaggy, jarry, intense flavors that come out of the wood. On the lower side of that, below 55 degrees, Jesus Christ, they keep saying degrees, below 55% ABV, so sort of 50 to 55% ABV, that's the area where you're pulling more of the sweet, uh, comfortable, friendly flavors out of the wood. The vanilla, the sweetness, the syrupiness, all of those things. The things that are, um, the things that are mellowing and smoothing in a whiskey. I, up until that trip, had been doing everything on the high end, so 62%. Uh, let me see what's on this. Yeah, so this is 60%, and it went really, really peppery for a while there, it really did. Uh, it's still sitting at whatever it is, I haven't watered it down, but that, that's sort of where it is. And because of that, I was getting a lot of my spirits heading towards that end. They were aggressive, um, they were full of spice and pepper, and a little bit tannic, which is great. I actually like that, like I said. But, now that I've got that new set of knowledge, I can test and experiment. So this, for example, uh, was 55, I think, from memory, and this I'm trying at 51. Of course, you can split a batch and play with any of these variables on, you know, two, three, four different versions of the same thing and then blend it back together as you wish. Alright guys, so I hope that kind of demystifies it for you a little bit. I hope that that shows you that there is, um, there's no right answer to this. It's a series of decisions that tweak knobs or dials or seesaws or whatever you want to call it in a certain direction. There's not a magical formula that just makes it beautiful for two reasons one if there was everyone would be freaking doing it and it would be easy to make great spirits and then great spirits wouldn't be great spirits they'd just be completely mediocre spirits and the second is that because your taste is completely different or potentially completely different to a whole lot of other people's tastes uh, and for that reason you're just going to have to experiment and find out what really works for you which is freaking awesome for two reasons one, you get to have the fun, the joy, the beauty of exploring that. And second is that that's the coolest thing about the craft in, in my mind, is that we get to make what we want the way we want it and drink the spirits that we like to drink and constantly strive to improve on that. It's beautiful. It really is.
All right, guys, so there you have it. The two ends of the spectrum and something right down the middle um, for what I've been doing recently. If you're doing things differently, I'd love to hear from you. If you're using barrels, especially small barrels, I would love to hear what you're up to. I need to get into that and try it sometime, especially if you're trying to make those barrels last longer and do something, you know, more on this time scale. All right, guys, that's it for me this week. If you liked the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you really liked it and you're not subscribed yet, make sure you do so now. Share this video around with any of your friends that you think might like it, and I'll catch you next time, guys. Keep on chasing the craft.